Hello friends, this video on NEET in alternating current is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us quickly discuss all the important uh, points of alternating current. Now this will be a quick recap of those topics which are more important from the perspective of the NEET exam. Okay, so now all of those who want to watch a detailed video of alternating current can refer the alternating current video of class 12th physics on examfear.com. Okay, so let's get quickly started for the quick recap. So what is alternating current? As we have learned before that this is a current where the direction changes periodically through a load. Now here, what do we mean by direction changes periodically? So that basically means that uh, normally when we talk about the direct current, so when we talk about current, we talk about two types of current, direct current, which is also abbreviated as DC and alternating current, which is abbreviated as AC. So in direct current, what happens is the current doesn't change direction with time. So let's say if we take time on the X axis and if we take current on the Y axis, so the current will not change its direction. It will remain constant with time. So that's direct current. Now, when we talk about alternating current, now with time, what happens is the current changes direction. So basically it, it goes through a pattern like this. So sometimes the current has its peak value. Sometimes the value drops to zero. Again, sometimes it reaches the peak value, but in the opposite direction. And that is why we say that it changes direction. Now also, if you observe carefully it changes direction in periodic intervals of time right like let's say that uh, every 10 seconds it changes direction so it's like that so that's alternating current now here many a times uh, children think that what exactly is this load because we often uh, include this in the definition now let me try to explain you load in a very simple way now whenever you think of any electric circuit any simple electric circuit so normally you have a battery you have a switch and you have some appliance for example you have a bulb like this and then what happens the moment you switch it on the current flows through the circuit and the bulb glows so, so that's the basic a uh, circuit functioning that comes to our mind whenever we think of an electric circuit, isn't it? Okay, now here in this circuit, we have two very important elements. The first is a source and this battery is a source. And what is a source? Source is that element which generates power because somebody needs to generate power. Otherwise, how will the current flow? So if you do not have the battery in the circuit, doesn't matter whether you have a bulb or a tube light or whatever, nothing will glow. So basically you always have a power generator and that power generator is called source. And at the same time, you also have something like the bulb which consumes power and this is called load. So a circuit has a power generator which is source and a power consumer which is load. Now all these appliances, bulb, tube light, electric fans etc. these are all examples of load. Right? So now I think you are all clear with the definition of alternating current. Now how do we uh, basically mathematically express alternating current. Now if you look at the pattern of alternating current, now the pattern of voltage is also the same. So alternating current and alternating voltage, they have similar patterns. Okay, now if I have to, now here if you look at this graph, at every instant of time, the value of the current is different. So that, that's the beauty of alternating current. So if you have to find out the value of current at any instant of time, how will you do that? So now if you look at this graph, this is very similar to a sine curve, isn't it? So we can very well say that I is equal to I naught sine omega t, where I naught is the peak value of current. So the maximum value of current that you see here in the graph, that's I naught. So we, so and this I represents the instantaneous value of current at any instant of time. So at any time t, I is given by I naught sine omega t. And what is omega? Omega is the angular frequency. Now in a very similar way, the alternating voltage can be represented as V is equal to V naught sine omega t, where V naught is the value of peak voltage. 
Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that alternating current can only be represented by sine functions. Alternating currents can very well also be represented by cos functions like this. So how is the cos function different from the sine function? So if you observe it closely for a sine function for time is equal to zero, the sine value is also zero. But that's not the case for a cos function because cos zero is equal to one. Right. So in this case, so basically you can say that you can also represent uh, an alternating current or an alternating voltage using a cos function. So, so that's pretty much about the very introduction of alternating current. Now the moment we talk about current, we also talk about many different types of current in alternating current because we have many different kinds of values. Like here you saw there is something called instantaneous current. There is also something called peak current. Now, there is also something called mean value of alternating current. Now, you might be wondering what is that? Now, since the value of current is different at every instant of time. So, if we talk about like, you know, one complete cycle. So, what's like the average value of current? So, how do we tell that? So, now for that, we use the word mean value. Now, the value of I mean over one complete cycle is always zero as you can see here. So if this side you have a positive value, this side you will have a negative value, they will cancel out each other. So you'll basically, the, so the value of I mean over one complete cycle will always be zero. Therefore, what we have done is we have changed the definition of I mean. So how do we define I mean? We say that I mean is defined as average over half a cycle. Instead of the complete cycle, we just consider half the cycle. So what does that mean? That means that I mean is equal to 1 upon t by 2 because we are calculating it over half the cycle. Half the cycle means half the time period. Integration of I dt from 0 to t by 2. So this is how we calculate I mean and we finally see that there exists a relationship between I mean and I naught which is I mean is equal to 0 0.637 I naught. Perfect. Now let's talk about another parameter which is I RMS that is RMS RMS stands for root mean square value of current. Now this is also known as virtual value of current or effective value of alternating current. So these are like you can say these are synonyms of uh, root mean square value of current. Now the question is why do we need so many different types of current? So, so the reason is very simple because in alternating current if you see the pattern of current is a little complicated. Its value keeps changing at every instant. Now why we have this root mean square value is, is uh, primarily because Normally, you would have seen the appliances. Let's say you uh, bought a bulb. So the bulb will have a rated value. It might say that it is a 50 volt bulb. So whatever that rated value is, that rated value is basically the virtual value or the effective value. And that's where we come across the root mean square value of alternating current. Right. So this root mean square value again is related to I naught and the relationship is I RMS is equal to 0 0.707 is into I naught or you can write it like this I RMS is equal to I naught by root 2 because a lot of uh, people find this easier to remember. Now let's try to connect these three values I naught, I mean and I RMS. So if we draw a graph like this Let's say this is alternating current. So what is I naught? The peak value of current. That is this value. What does I mean? It is 0. Point, roughly 0. 0.6 times of I naught. So if, if this is the half, slightly uh, above half. So somewhere here you have I mean. <clears throat> and what about I RMS? I RMS is 0. 0.7 times of I naught. So again, slightly above I mean. So somewhere here you would have I RMS. So basically this point in the graph is the value of I naught. These points on the graphs are the values of I RMS and these points represent the value of I mean. So I think now you are clear with the basics of alternating current and the various uh, types of current values that we generally talk about. Mm -hmm. So let us now talk about how do we calculate RMS values of current and voltages for different representations of current because uh, we will see that like as we saw that uh, we can use sine function as well as cosine function to represent alternating current and alternating voltage. 
Now for different sort of representation, we will calculate RMS values in different ways. For example, if current is represented as I1 sine omega t plus I2 cos omega t, where I1 and I2 are constant currents. In this case, if I ask you to find out the RMS value of current, so in that, that case, you can just say that here I RMS will be equal to root over I1 square by 2 plus I2 square by 2. Now see, I can give you a very simple tip to remember this. Now root mean square. Root means it, there has to be a square root. So we have a square root. Mean means average. So here if you say it is like average of I1 square and I2 square because I1 square plus I2 square divided by 2. So that's average and square. So obviously that is why we are squaring I1 and I2. So whenever you have any current which is represented in this form, this is how we calculate the RMS value or virtual value of alternating current. Now we are not including the derivations here because this video is meant for a quick recap. So for detailed derivation, you can always derivations you can always refer the alternating current video of physics of class 12th on examfear.com. Now in a similar way, if you have voltage which is represented like this, V1 sine omega t plus V2 cos omega t. So in this case, you can say that V RMS will be equal to root over V1 square by 2 plus V2 square by 2. Now let's look at one more representation. So if current is represented as I0 plus I1 sin omega t plus I2 cos omega t. So basically you have one additional term I0. So in this case, what would be the RMS value of current? This would also be similar. It is just that you also have an additional term I0. And since with I0, you do not have a sine or cosine term. So here we are not dividing it by 2. So that's a tip to remember. So I0 square plus I1 square by 2 plus I2 square by 2. So this is how you will calculate I RMS. And in a similar way, if you have an alternating voltage, which is represented as V0 plus V1 sine omega t plus V2 cos omega t. So in that case, you can say that V RMS is equal to root over V0 square plus V1 square by 2 plus V2 square by 2. Perfect. Now let's move on to another representation. So if current is equal to I1 sine omega t plus I2 sine 2 omega t plus I3 sine 3 omega t plus I0. So here if you see the angles are also changing. So omega t then 2 omega t then 3 omega t. So that the pattern is quite different from the first two patterns. So in this case I RMS however will still be root over I0 square plus I1 square by 2 plus I2 square by 2 plus I3 square by 2. And I think you already would have guessed by now that if you have a similar pattern for voltage, so there also you will similarly calculate the RMS value of voltage. So in this fashion, if you remember these, they will greatly help you because in your neat exam, you might have less time to derive everything. So if you have some formula in your tips, it, it helps you to solve the problems quickly. Okay, now let's... Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.